What happens next is not my fault. Oh my God. We have a brand new game. I was trying to contain myself. Oh my <laughs> Go option one, not safe. <laughs> These yeah. are insane. And Brandon keeps killing it. What's good, creative fam? Brandon Washington here. I know y'all probably saw it. The intro, we're gonna keep updating it. I'm having too much fun with this intro. Obviously, last week we had on Jared, the CEO of Red, and we also had my good friend Justin Porter on, and he had his new setup, so we had to update his clip for the actual intro. But man, thank you guys so much for tuning in this week. I'm super, super hyped. I feel like these shows just keep getting better and better. And it's 100% because of you guys. You guys keep giving us feedback and keep letting us know how we should keep making this show better. And ultimately, like it keeps happening. And it's 100% because of you guys. And we're having so much fun. Of course, I am, I am joined with my amazing co-host and good friend and someone who works within my team, Mr. Jarrell. Welcome back, sir. What's up, creative fam? <laughs> We're so glad you joined us for the live stream this week. Dude, it's so this is this is getting good. I'm feeling really good about these streams. We're working out the kinks. Things are getting better. Yeah, we're having guests on every week. We're having incredible guests every week. Actually, last week was a really cool episode, Brandon. Yes. Last last What week. happened if they weren't in it? Okay, so in case you missed last week, which if you had if you did, it's available on my channel. You can go back and rewatch it. But as some of you guys know, Red released a new camera last week. They released the Red V Raptor X, which meant that now the camera actually has global shutter. And so obviously you guys know I'm a I'm a kind of a red fanboy. And then my good friend Justin Porter is probably the ultimate red fanboy. Um, absolutely. Absolutely a red fanboy. And so the two of us had already scheduled to like geek out about this new camera, but then I was able to get in contact with the CEO of Red themselves, Jared Land, and he was able to come on the show and we were able to interview him, not only about the actual camera itself, but we also were able to talk about sort of the future of Red. And I'm telling you, like, even if you're not a Red fanboy, you don't care about Red cameras, he dropped some gems that I've actually been posting here and there throughout my Instagram. So you can follow me on Instagram at bwashmedia. But I've been posting some of these gems because when I tell you the conversation was packed full of so much knowledge, I just got to a place where I just shut up. I was just being quiet and letting them talk because he was just giving us so much amazing insight in the industry and then how companies work together. And so I thought it was like an amazing show. So if you haven't seen that episode, definitely go back and check out that episode. But the really cool part is we're doing something special at the beginning of March. And so I just want to give you the stage to tell people <laughs> just a little bit how the red camera might segue yeah. into maybe a little red event. Okay, so I, I I know we didn't really talk about this, and I think you have the graphics. We go ahead and pull that up. But like, so we are actually, this was planned before I even knew this camera was coming out. We are actually doing the World of Red Cinema event. So this is a in-person event here in Houston, Texas. It's gonna be on March 2nd. And what's crazy is the fact that not only are we gonna have Red cameras there for you to actually get hands-on experience with, but Red themselves is actually gonna be sending out some of their technicians and educators to actually help us all fully get immersed and fully understand the world of red. We also are going to have hands-on experiences. So we'll have models and we'll have four different sets, including an LED wall. Y'all know I'm obsessed with LED walls. We're going to have an LED wall there to be able to shoot on. And of course, there's a huge opportunity for networking because there's going to be filmmakers from all over the place. I've already talked to a few of you guys, and some of you guys are actually going to be traveling in for this event. So tickets are not on sale yet. Tickets will go on sale next Friday. So next Friday, when we're live on the 9th, you will be able to actually sign up and start like, get your tickets sold. The, the thing is, we only have enough space for 100 people, right, Terrell? 100 people? Only 100. Only 100 people for this event. And the reason is we want to make sure that you have plenty of time with the cameras. If we make it a massive event and invite hundreds and hundreds of people, you're not going to get a good amount of time with the actual camera. So we are limiting the event to only 100 people. But that said, if you do want to get on this event, 
be prepared. Next Friday, tickets will go on sale, as well as make sure you put it on your calendar right now, March 2nd. If you need to fly into Houston, make those arrangements, whatever you want to do. You've got plenty of time, a little over a month to actually start getting all the details locked in. Uh, and if you want to stay up to date with all the right information, the easiest thing to do is obviously follow me over on Instagram, but definitely be on the lookout. We have uh, we have a link to the website, and I think we need to go ahead and get that uh, put into the chat if we can. Um, so that way you guys can go ahead and get signed up, put your email address in or whatever. That way we can email you as soon as tickets go on sale. But if you watch this show live, we're actually going to launch the tickets live on the show. So that way you guys can actually be the first ones to know. And there's no chance that you, well, hopefully there's no chance that you could be in a situation where it sells out before you get a chance to hop into the event. So yeah, the world of red cinema and, oh, did I mention the new red cameras are actually going to be there? That's so cool. Like, isn't that That's nuts? Be, to be able to be able to shoot with them and to get footage is going to be so cool. Oh yeah, and and like Red's going to have all the accessories too. Like the new EVF is going to be there. The uh, PL EV, no, what is it? It's the PL adapter, but it has a uh, NDs, electronic NDs. That's going to be there. So we're going to have all the accessories. And I've already talked to you guys. See him in the chat, Mr. Scott. He has already told me that he's going to be there as well. And so there's going to be a couple other creators who are going to be stopping through. Um, but yeah, man, I'm just really excited about this red event. It's, it's, uh, it's been a good, it's been a good couple weeks. It's been a good few weeks. Very cool. Well, speaking of special creators, we have a special creator on the stream already here. Yes. If you've seen the thumbnail, we just Brandon's gonna gonna introduce our, our special guest for today. Dude, like so I'm super pumped about our guest today because I mean I like I'm not gonna bury the lead. Y'all already know it's Caleb, but like Caleb from DSLR video shooters, he is an amazing person. Like I've had the opportunity to hang out with him a few times at a couple of these creator events, whether that's NAB or a Sony trip or something like that. And one of my favorite things is honestly just to sit down with this guy and just have a conversation because he's so intelligent and he's so smart. And even the way that his mind works, you can learn so much just from having a conversation. But also, he's probably one of the few people that I know who loves gear and just loves it and can talk about it. And that's why his entire channel has been dedicated to it. But so much for so much so that not only does he love the actual gear itself, but he's also started down this new path of figuring out how to get even more out of the gear by adding additional accessories to it. So I'm really excited today. I think we have an amazing show. We have an amazing guest. And I'm going to go ahead and get ready to pull this banner off screen. Uh, but I'm really excited to bring up our amazing guest today, Mr. Caleb Pike. What's up, bro? What's up, dude? How are you? <laughs> wow, you really buttered me up there. <laughs> well, dude, it, but this I'm not guy. lying. I'm just saying. It's just, it's just well, who you. you are. <laughs> yeah, very excited to be here and uh, super loving the show. I've, I've not seen a full episode, but uh, I showed up like what? 15 minutes ago oh <laughs> like last second and they just like got everything all dialed in everything's good so oh well i did be here man thanks for having that's me one of the benefits of working with filmmakers for this show is like i'm not really too worried about like their setups that's a great point. Uh, yeah 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 like, it, it definitely helps working with other creators because like we know they're gonna have the cameras we know yeah, they're gonna yeah. have the lighting we just need to quickly do a test to make sure there's no echo that's really it. Right, but, right, right. I mean, thank yep. you so much for hopping on. And Absolutely. I'm really, really excited about the show. Me too, man. Well, okay. So just in case there's some crazy person who's watching this show and they don't know who you are, I tend to not like like label people because I know some people like mm. the term creator, some people like the term content creator. How right. do you describe what you do and like what label do you currently put on yourself and like the content that you make? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I would say probably just YouTuber, a guy okay. who makes videos and puts them on the internet. Uh, influencer is kind of a dirty word in our house, <laughs> <laughs> but that's, you know, uh, but yeah, YouTuber, well, filmmaker in DIY or. I will say you guy. are quite the influencer because I like, like I obviously like obviously I make content in this space as well. Right. But there are a few creators that like 
I will watch their videos before I make a purchase and then post their video. I'm like, okay, I can make this purchase. Like mm. I can make it with confidence because I know this person is like super thorough and will give me all the information. And you're one of those people. Like, in fact, after you made the, uh, I think it was the road pros, um, uh, yeah. lavalier mics, I like texted you and was like, dude, amazing video. Send me your affiliate link. I want to buy it now based off of just your video. So, mm. I, I mean, I know influencer is a weird word and like, you know, it's yeah, kind of yeah, like yeah. a taboo. You kind of say it underneath the table, but like you yeah. definitely have influence. So thank you. <laughs> well, thank you, man. Yeah, it's it's uh, yeah. So I would say probably probably YouTuber is probably the that's how it all kind of started. Originally, it was a blog and then I just yeah. realized I hated writing. And so <laughs> I just was like, I'm just going to make videos. And um, here we are. So. so is your background in filmmaking? Because I feel like yeah. now, like your channel is obviously a lot about filmmaking gear and you guys have right. definitely gone down the rabbit hole into like improving the gear. But what does your background actually look like? And how did that lead you to inevitably making a YouTube channel, but first saying, okay, I'll try this blogging thing and then making a YouTube channel. So how did you go from filmmaker to YouTuber? Yeah, yeah. So as um, I was really interested in film, that was the goal was to go to film school um didn't want to pay for film school because columbia and chicago is going to be like insane so uh, i started doing some gen ed hated college and i was like you know what i'm not i did one semester and then i quit and then i said i'll, I'll, I'll pursue film just on my own for a year um started just wherever i could help out meeting as many people as possible um and then at the time like everything kind of happened at once the 5d mark ii came out Mm. the 7d came out i was too broke for the 5d so i bought the 7d so, i had a web background um and so i threw together a wordpress site started just writing random stuff as i was learning about you know because every a lot it was uh, not to knock a lot of us back in the day but like f from camcorder land to large sensor everyone's like shutter iso mm -hmm. like, what, what's gain like what is all this stuff um, so started writing about that and then started filming tests for myself and putting them on Vimeo. Cause at the time it was novel to do full HD 1080p on the internet, like to upload it and watch mm -hmm. it in HD. That was like cool and new. So I started doing that and then people started asking questions. So I did follow-up videos and honestly, that's where it just kind of slowly turned into what the channel became. Um, so it was totally accidental and then having the web background and the, the DSLR video shooter, which is yeah. super dated now, but uh, <laughs> was very keyword friendly back in the, in 2010. Uh, so yeah, that's that's kind of when it, how it went down. I would imagine back then, 2010, DSLR video shooter instantly put you at the top of Google Analytics and search <clears throat> traffic. But like DSLRs, then this might be offensive to say to you, but DSLRs are kind of dead. Oh, super and dead. So, so yeah. like now. How At do this you... point, I'm waiting for it to come back, like like film <laughs> like, like, or some like stupid vinyl. The retro yeah. gen yes. gen whatever the whatever gen is after Gen Z. Years from now. Yeah, yeah, they're yeah. gonna pick up. They're gonna pick. So you're just so you're what so you're gonna ride the DSLR video shooter wave until that next so wave. Like, look comes at this around. flappy thing in front of the sensor. This is cool. People are gonna want that <laughs> organic shake from the yeah. mirror. Like I, I'm not gonna lie, I ha like I, I shoot like very rarely with the 1DX Mark II because Jarrell has it and I'll like play around with it. And the feeling of the shutter of the 1DX yep. Mark II is unmatched yep. by any mirrorless camera. Like I don't care what speaker they put on there to try to make it sound like a shutter. I, I don't have that same feeling. Yeah. Yep. It's true. There's something about that big clack. Um, that <laughs> you can feel great. it. You can feel yeah. the vibration. Yeah, there's feedback. Yeah. It's so like a wonder... mechanical keyboards, you know? Exactly there's about that. It's just there's that there's that feedback. So for someone who was in the DSLR rail and now you've seen us like fully go mirrorless, what right. do you see like as far as like what has been like some of the best improvements you've seen as we've made these changes? Because I feel like going from DSLR to mirrorless is like a massive jump. But like we had to sacrifice some things at first. Now right. we're kind of coming full circle. So like as that tech has evolved and you've seen the entire thing come, what has been like one of the biggest takeaways from you as we've made that jump from DSLRs to mirrorless? 
Uh, I think mainly it's it's the processing. So not really anything to do with the mirrorless versus DSLR, but the processors. So so having, you know, 4K, 10-bit, that was the big one for me. That was a huge day when, like, Sony came out with the A7S III, mm-hmm. and we were finally able to do 10-bit, you know, quality codec. Um, and that's when I finally, like, fully switched to Sony. I always loved what they were doing, but... Right now, that's that's the big one for me is uh, in in form factor. And I um, I love that like FX3 um, C70. Like people made fun of me back in the day, like just buy a real camera. Stop messing around with these DSLRs and stuff. But I love that form factor because and one of the reasons one of my products exists is I love that. Essentially, you've got like a sensor, interchangeable sensor, and you can build it up to what you need or strip it down to like nothing. That's great because yeah, uh, I was, was going to ask, uh, it doesn't look like you like that form factor because every video you post <laughs> yeah. is like some crazy rig. Like I love to rig out stuff, but you've yeah. got me a hundred percent beat because you're rigging <laughs> stuff out. You're taking like the, the Canon EOS M and you're like rigging that out and turning it into like an amazing camera. And so it's like, do you love the form factor or do you just love the sensor? But you love that the form factor can can allow you to go crazy. Yeah, I, I saw cams in the chat and we talked about this at one point. I think the saddest uh, I haven't seen the chat in a little bit, but I saw him in there somewhere. But we were talking. I think the saddest word in the English language is stock. Mm. I love to customize stuff. And, you know, ultimately we're all different. And so we all want to run our own setup. Um, so that's what I love about these mirrorless cameras. Kind of going back to your, your, is just a box with a good codec and whatever features. And then you can build it up or strip it back down. Whereas a cinema camera, that's a cinema camera. It can never be an FX3 on the shelf in a fridge or whatever. Uh, well, or you can't have 12 of them and okay. do all this crazy <laughs> different stuff. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I'll yeah. agree with you there. So as far as these cameras go, I would love to, and I'm sure a lot of people here, because like obviously we're talking about, you know, does the perfect camera already exist? And I feel like, <clears throat> I feel like you have, you've definitely through your channel explored the capabilities of like getting the most out of a camera from like the hardware and adding elements to it, whether that's V mount batteries or rigs or monitors, because I remember that was one of the first videos I saw of yours. You tested like Tit, well, it wasn't one of the first ones, but it was one of the ones I definitely watched a few times. Was like you tested like 10 monitors to try to figure out, you know, which monitor is best. Mm-hmm. Um, when you look at cameras today, what would you say are like the top five features that have to be in a camera that is released in the modern world? Like, if it doesn't have these five features, it's almost not even necessarily worth looking at. Right. And then, who do you, and like, so like, what are those five features for you that really make a great camera? Yeah, um, I'm going to go with number one is dynamic range. OK. Um, How much? How much dynamic? Enough. Range? <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, How ideally, many stops? How 15 many stops? to 17, you know, okay. but mm. for me, yeah, if, like, like if, if someone was asking me, like, let's say another way to spin this around is if, if Panasonic comes out with a new camera or Fuji or whoever. Um, what would be me going, ooh, hmm, mm. or would I just immediately like, meh, dynamic range is going to be one of them. Okay. Um, codec is number two. Um, so having codec options. So I don't want to record and have insane amounts of data. So uh, intelligent compression, which is like why I love red, uh, what they're mm. able to do. It's amazing. Um, and then beyond that, it's just kind of gravy. Uh, I would say, I would say probably like a really solid log. Okay. Uh, if it's not going to be a compressed raw, a super solid lo- log um, is going to be really important. So right now, Sony's pretty solid. Um, Panasonic's very solid. You know, everyone's doing pretty good. Yeah. Um, and then from there, it's little bells and whistles, little things like ND that's missing so in this mirrorless. Having some built-in ND. Yeah, built-in ND. Uh, I.O. is really important to me. Um so someday I'd love to see these cameras have two HDMI outputs or an HDMI and an SDI with settings for each of them. Um, and, oh, I mean, sensor readout, that's, I should, that should be higher up in the list is the readout of the sensor, how 
if there's going to be serious rolling shutter issues. And then I personally love oversampled sensors. So mm -hmm. not as much fan of the FX3 for that reason. So is this sort of like your checklist that you go through when you're doing a review? Because I know, like, as someone who does reviews myself, like, everybody's process to review is so different. Right. Like, I can't review something until I actually go, like, shoot it somewhere. Like, if mm -hmm. I don't take it on set or actually go do a production or, like, make a mock production or whatever it is in order to actually shoot it, it's very hard for me to, like, wrap my head around the camera because <laughs> I'm not right. very technical. Like, I don't think about, like, I need to shoot it and then edit it, and that will tell me how good or bad the codec is. Just reading right. it off of the spec sheet for me does nothing. I'm just not right. wired that way. But you seem to be someone who's very technical. Like, if there's a scale and, like, I'm over here and Gerald Undone's over here, you're definitely right. leaning more towards Gerald. Yeah. So, like, when you, when you get these cameras and you start the process of reviewing, is that, like, that checklist that we just went off, is that, like, do you, like, oh, it needs to have a good this, 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 and this, and this will ultimately inform to me is, like, is this a good camera? Or do you believe in a camera having like a secret wow factor that doesn't have to make sense, but it just works? I mean, it really depends on who who is trying to buy a camera and is watching a review, right? Um, mm -hmm. So for me, like all those things I listed, that's important to me. There's lots of people who are completely satisfied with mushy DSLRs with 8-bit, you know, footage. Mm -hmm. So it really depends on... You know, who, who's what, like what I love about Gerald is he has a very systematic thing and he'll be able to tell you, you know, this is going to be good for this, bad for that. Um, so, so yeah, it's, it's, I, I don't, I, I've not been like Gerald where I have a, a very consistent way of reviewing things. Um, it's kind of like, oh, this camera, I'm just really excited about these handful of things. And so I'll focus on that. Um, so sorry, that was really. No, that's good. I think that's I think that's a great Strange. way. No, I, th I personally I feel like I struggle reviewing cameras sometimes yeah. because I feel like we're kind of in a weird situation right now where like everything's good. So it's oh, like yeah. trying yeah. to find the nuances. And that's why I'm like, what is your system like when it comes to a review? Because I think because I don't have a system, yeah. I like take a camera out of the box and I'm like, oh, it's great. I shoot it a little bit and I'm like, it's awesome. What do I talk about? <laughs> like, you know, there's no, yeah, yeah, no, yeah. no drama to it. Uh, and so sometimes I feel like when we're creating content, especially when we know that, you know, some, especially someone like you who has a lot of influence on like a lot of people watch your stuff before they buy. I'm, you know, I'm a product of that. Um, you know, I just wonder like, how do you process that, that department? Now I know that people have been asking questions in the chat. And so before I ask my next question, I do want to just say, everyone in the chat right now, if you have a question for Caleb, do me a huge favor. Go ahead and put it in now because I'm going to pick a few of those to ask him in just a second. But before I do that, Caleb, I want to ask you, do you think that there is a perfect camera or could be a perfect camera? And if so, do you think it already exists or do you think we're like, do you think we're close? And like, what's the closest camera? Right. <clears throat> I think there could be a perfect camera. And and to me, it's kind of like cars, right? So you've got your muscle cars, you've got your pickup trucks, you've got your, you know, F1 cars, but they all have an engine, right? Yeah. But different components change. So I think the perfect camera, and I would love to do a video on this and actually like 3D print the parts, mm. but I think the perfect camera, and I think Sony would be a great person to, or company to do it is, uh, or Red, someone, yeah, that would work. Uh, where you essentially separate out the components and make them interchangeable. So Ooh, fully modular. Yeah, take all of Sony's sensors and put them in a sensor block, kind of like the head of the um, DJI Ronin okay. thing, yeah. right? And you've just got seven of those. You've got the A7S1, you've got the A11, the 8K. You have all the different, all the flavors, right? Yeah. And then you have different uh, processor backs. Some look like a a Venice, some are just a little tiny one that pops on the back and they all have different features for processing like 4K 120. Some are going to have full 8K 120 like monster mode or if you only need whatever. But then you can essentially build, take the different modules and mix and match, add different accessories. Um, so it's it's not really one camera. It's more of a system. Um, but I think that would be the ultimate camera because then 
yeah. you can roll out in the desert with your pickup truck or yeah. strip it down to a hot hatch and rip around rally style or take someone out to dinner, you know, in a nice, Just yeah, a different, like that, yeah, you, you got different vehicles. Such a unique way to think about it because like, like this, one of the things that actually I love about Red is like, so like Red just announced the the Raptor X or whatever, and I have a Raptor already, and they have an upgrade program where I could just right. send my camera back in. Obviously, it costs money, but I'll send my camera back in, and they will basically redo the internals. And so it's not right. saying that the Raptor is bad, but it's like, hey, if you want the original rolling shutter or if you want the global shutter, you just pick which one you want. And they're like right. kind of like two different systems. But what you're saying is almost like the parts are almost like Legos that you can yeah. then put together yourself. So you could almost like, you're like, oh, I want both sensors. So I'll just keep them in a drawer. And then whichever one yeah. I need that day, I can just like take it out and put it on. That makes perfect sense for you to say that as someone who probably has like buckets and buckets and buckets of rigging material. Cause it just sounds <laughs> yeah. like you're rigging a camera the same way you would rig out a camera. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So I, I, I love that kind of idea. That'd be a lot of fun to like, you know, buy a camera They could have different combos, but mix it up. Um, cause then it's, yeah. Cause the long story short, there is no one camera that's going to be perfect because mm. you can have okay. an area Alexa, but it doesn't have autofocus or you can't put that thing on a small little gimbal. Um, <laughs> codex or why you know it's all different right yeah Every, everything has its weak point depending on its use case so very, yeah, very i think that would be as close as we could probably come to a, a perfect camera so the perfect camera is literally modularly building out your perfect your, your perfect camera right or having the option to yeah change up your camera to have the same sensor but change up uh yeah so i don't, I don't I think know that that, i feel like as someone who like like i love sony cameras but one of my biggest drawbacks of Sony cameras is the fact that they come out with a new Sony camera every two to three months. And it's right. always like, oh, well, that camera got a feature that I really like. I like mm -hmm. my existing camera, but I just want that one thing from this right. camera on mine. And instead of it just being like a software update or something, mm -hmm. there's just at least the option to be able to like pull something. You know what I mean? Uh, and just to be able to make that part of my camera. That would be really, really interesting. Yeah. Uh, so I know we got some questions in the chat. Chat, I'm going to go ahead and run to the chat and pull up some questions. I think Jarrell has a couple questions for us lined up. So, Caleb, sorry, <laughs> I have not vetted these questions. Hit uh, me. Jarrell has. So I, I, think <laughs> be, I think you'll be fine no matter what. I've kind of vetted these questions. <laughs> <laughs> kind of vetted them. All right, let's do it. All righty, Caleb, you have launched uh, Cam Camera Foundry Co. And so we hey, we just love for you to talk about that and what that what that is. Yeah. Um, so Camera Foundry is uh, a new venture um, that I'm really having fun with because I realized not too long ago that for all these years, like, I don't really like to call myself. Film you, you were talking about how you have to go out and film something to test it, right? Right. Uh, I've always enjoyed filming. At one point, I was like whole hog, wanted to like narrative filmmaking, cinematographer, that whole thing. But I'm realizing more and more I'm less interested in making videos and more about um the gear and just making things and i think making videos and making films is part of that mm -hmm. what i love about filmmaking is it's one of the there's so many disciplines yeah sound lighting audio camera movement there's technical you got to know technical stuff um so anyway I, i'm realizing i just love making stuff and i realized uh i felt like i was trying to like force myself to be a filmmaker to sh show my filmmaking chops because mm -hmm. a lot of people are like well shoot something with it you know with cameras mm -hmm. Uh, but I, I think I finally realized I'm for anyone who likes John Wick. Yep. And I think the third movie there's this isn't a spoiler, but there's a guy who is like, instead of like someone showing you different wines, it's different weapons. Yep. And uh, I'm that guy in the film industry. <laughs> I so love everyone else is John Wick doing their thing, you know, assassins or filmmakers. <laughs> and I, 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 I can help, you know, find the right tools, uh, but I'm going to stay behind my, my glass bench. Through. And yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so long story short, started this company and making uh, equipment, uh, which has been a lot of fun. Really enjoying that. So he's massively underselling this, guys. Um, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to help you out here because what you're doing <sighs> is so much bigger than just the guy who shows cool, toy, like, cool tools. Like what, what I love about what you've been making 
is one like it's high quality first which i saw you posted like an instagram story to the company page the other day because some people were a little worried about like the price or whatever right and for me i was like i would rather pay for quality then have you guys go like, you know, outsource this across, you know, to another country or whatever. And then you have to deal with like the possibility of it not being actual high quality and right. being properly, you know, manufactured. And so you guys are killing it with quality first. But then the other thing is that you are actually like someone who, although I know you say you don't, you're not like a traditional filmmaker, you're more of a maker, but like you're someone who actually uses these tools and knows what's missing. And because you've had all these years of like testing and rigging yourself, you know, when you see a system, how to actually make it more functional for mm -hmm. us as filmmakers, which I think is actually, you know, super important. Like last week when we talked to Jared, he was mentioning that like they shoot as well. So like they right. know what's missing and they know how to test certain features and they do, they go out and they test with these cameras and they shoot with them and then they test with them and they shoot with them and they test with them in order to make sure that when they bring something to market, it's actually something that's going to be beneficial to the creators. And I have trust in what you guys are doing because you are the same way and you're not going to skimp on quality, especially when you're buying a physical product. I think it's so important to buy something that's going to last a long time mm -hmm. because you, I mean, filmmakers we're rough with our gear. It's being thrown into a bag or into a Pelican case or whatever. And so the fact that you guys are willing to take that time and make sure that the quality is really good, I think is phenomenal. So I think, you know, he was underselling it guys, but I'm gonna tell you like the products look amazing and I would rather you guys continue to push for that excellence because as a filmmaking industry with, so much cheap stuff on Amazon. It's nice to see that people actually still care about quality. Yeah. Yeah. And I, uh, along with customizing stuff and I hate that word stock. Uh, I also really love overbuilt stuff. So, um, my wife, if, if she's watching or if she heard this, she'd be laughing right now. Cause if, if there's something that only needs two screws to be secure, I've got to do like eight to 12. Like <laughs> everything's overbuilt. So, it's been fun to, and I've been building this for myself, honestly. And then it's just turning around and, and sharing that. Um, so yeah, it's been a lot of fun. The stuff, it, the stuff works out well. And I can tell you guys just a quick, I want to just give you like a quick little, uh, from my own products that I've, that I've purchased slash got from you. I'm not sure if I had to purchase it or how it worked, but when I bought that, when I made that ATEM mini case, we actually oh, yeah. made it for our church and like you had the 3d parts and everything online and I ordered all the parts and we built it. The church still uses it and it still functions without any problems. And it's like, it's phenomenal. And so mm. your, your design was amazing off top, but there were moments where I was like, man, this is a lot like, but it's, it's holding up. So I was like, Oh, I guess it, guess it works. Yeah. We should build it in a Pelican case and we should use these screws with it because it actually made it, you know, more durable. So, so great job. Fantastic. Thanks man. All yeah. right. Do you have another question for us? Real? Yeah. The next question comes from a friend of the channel, Cam Mackey. But this might be an inside joke, so I don't know. So okay. I'm just going <laughs> out there. Let's hear it. Green paint. Ah, uh, yes. Where it at? So Cam and I share a, a deep, deep love of the same, like olive drab, kind of specific green. Okay. So he's probably asking where it is. I don't know. That'd be pretty sick. Like here's here's our our product, Cineback. And uh, if we, I think we could 3D print it. I know of a source for the matte olive green. So maybe I'll have to get one out to you, Cam. But if I could anodize the aluminum the same color, that would be pretty sick. So yeah. That looks really sharp. Yes, I... yeah, man. But don't don't doubt I've not seriously spent a lot of time trying to figure out how to make that possible. <laughs> <laughs> Caleb, just in case someone hasn't seen that video of the Cine back, yeah. now that you've introduced it on screen, can you just take a minute just to kind of show us how you're making that camera way more functional. Yeah, so it essentially um, is kind of like in between an FX6 and uh, an FX3. Um, so there's an FX, this is an FX3. And I don't know, my lighting is very dramatic here, but you can see there's this device on the back and there's giant cheese plates on the top and bottom. So rigging this up is a dream, uh, but there's also a spot for the screen. So let's see, I gotta hide my face here. But there's a spot for the screen, so you can flip it out and kind of have it in a AD kind of setup. Um, has a V mount battery on the back, and it's just 
again, overbuilt, and then a, a ton of uh, D-tabs on the side. We now make a, a, a handle for it, which is uh, milled out of aluminum, uh, has a ton of area locating pins, so that goes here for the guys who want more of a dock style setup. So we're going to be doing it with several, four, several other cameras, but the idea is you can strip it down to just your FX3, or you can build it up to something that's going to last all day long. Um, and it's just built to be built out. So you could turn this into an insane rig, which I, I really appreciate. So that's Cindy back and we've got some other little stuff, but that's kind of been our main product, uh, yeah, for a little while. I mean, again, just obviously I've seen it in the videos and stuff, but like seeing it in your hand and, and in the slide, like you can tell it's just, it's just really, really well built. Do we mm. have one more question we want to pull up? We have one more and it comes from DL. He says, can you ask the perfect camera question? Oh, can you ask the perfect camera question for stages of creators? What's the perfect camera for the beginner, the intermediate and the advanced? Ooh. Ah. Uh. Um, I guess it would depend on the budget. So budget, I mean, a 6,700 with updated firmware and maybe a fan. It's going to be pretty <laughs> sick. Um, <laughs> let's see, uh, intermediate. I love the a seven. And again, there's just so many good cameras. Like Brandon was saying earlier, it's, you, it's hard to mess up, but as a Sony guy, the a seven, two, a seven C two, it's really oh, yeah. solid. It's my favorite Sony sensor oversampled. You can't go wrong with that tiny thing. And then if you have a little more budget, you can go with an A7 uh, 4, which is a little more meaty, less overheating. Uh, and of course, A7S is great too. I don't like that sensor as much because of the the restrictions with resolution, but mm -hmm. uh, but for low light, it's a monster. So and the FX30, that's a cinema, that's a cinema line camera say, for 1700 bucks. That's nuts. That's probably one of my favorite intermediate cameras is the FX30. I know some people yeah. get caught up a little bit on the fact that it is a APS-C sensor, but like as someone who shoots on like, you know, red Komodos and stuff, like that's yeah. a Super 35 sensor. Yep. But like the crop is really something that you you quickly figure out how to overcome, especially once yeah. you learn a little bit more about lenses. Um, but you just get so much more and it's so much easier on the camera when it comes to processing yeah. that yeah. you can just get way more out of a crop sensor camera especially for the price and you could with the same budget on a full frame. Yeah. A super sweet setup would be an FX 30 with uh, my favorite sleeper lens, which is the Sigma 18 to 50 F two eight. Okay. It's like 400, 500 bucks. It's essentially a 70 to or 24 to 70 equivalent tiny lens and the minimum focus distance, not even joking is this close. So you could fill the frame with a quarter and still be a U.S. Right? quarter. And it would be in, in, in focus so awesome setup okay so you are currently on your channel if anyone hasn't seen caleb's channel recently uh he posted a video sort of like explaining his sort of look at youtube as a whole right now and i want to make sure i set this up properly so definitely feel free to interject and tell me if i get anything wrong here but you you said something in that video that really resonated with me and that was that like you realized that you were a maker and being a maker doesn't necessarily mean that you are like, you have to play the YouTube game. You just want right. to make videos and put them on YouTube and use YouTube as that platform. And part of that process has meant that you've uploaded a little bit less, but at the same time, you're going down this new venture with your new company where you seem very, very excited. And it seems like you're putting out content on that channel as well as that Instagram account and kind of posting there more regularly. So when it comes to your main channel, what are currently the things that have you the most excited in the world of filmmaking that you think could like spark that excitement and make you want to just like start making tons and tons of videos around, whether that's new tech in the filmmaking industry or right. stuff that you plan on making. But like, what is that for you? What is that thing that's like currently like, oh, this makes me really excited. I want to make more stuff about this. Um, <clears throat> I think a big part of it is just kind of tired of making videos, if I'm honest, <laughs> and, uh, uh, and want to get into just making stuff again, uh, without having to document it. Cause as anyone knows, if you're, if you ever filmed anything where you're showing someone how to make something, yep. it ruins the making experience. You know, like if, if an artist is building and crafting something, you get into flow where you're just, you're dialed in, you're doing your thing. Yeah. And when you have to document it, it ruins that because you're chopping it all up. Um, so 
uh, for the main channel, I am I am looking forward to doing just videos I'm interested in, not sweating stuff. I'm the level of turn down on reviews is at an all time high. Just turning mm-hmm. reviews down, I'm definitely. I think I'm 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 kind of done with that. At least uh, not ex- completely, but there's going to be way less reviews. There's going to be a lot more um, coming up with solutions, which will involve gear. Yeah. Um, but instead of you know, oh, here's a road go to let's review it it'll be all right i'm gonna redo my like audio kit for 2024 and i want to build the most insane setup for that and it's going to use this microphone it's great because blah 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 so it'll be more stuff like that more um more making rigs and doing custom builds um will be a lot of fun to kind of use our products and other stuff to to build the perfect dock setup or the perfect cine setup or or whatever i really like when you're looking at the solution and then you're like okay that's like it's more of like you're inspired by like solving that problem for a person right and that's inspiring (laughs) content which i think is super super admirable because i think that's why a lot of us go to youtube is we do have a problem like whether it's how do i get the most out of my camera or how do i make my image look more cinematic um sorry i, I hate yeah. that term. <laughs> um but ultimately like people have problems and i love that you are taking the initiative to like find a solution and that ultimately to me i think that's really inspiring like that's what's inspiring you to want to make videos especially in a time where you're like oh i want to you know i'm going to slow down but what i do care about is like solving someone else's problem so i think you might be a perfect person to answer this question because i know as a creator we go through like these these seasons easily you know we have moments where we're highly motivated and inspired and then we have moments where we're like why am i even why do i own a camera like you just you have these moments so for you and you kind of touched on this on your video but i want to hear you kind of give it to us live in a way but like what advice would you give to creators as they're going through their journey to right. f- like focus on the thing that inspires them to want to create. Like what advice would you give to someone who's like, I'm trying to be a creator, but like I'm struggling with motivation and inspiration yeah. and not just chasing this content creator rabbit hole of yeah. a bunch of Instagram reels and or shorts or whatever. Right. Uh, it's really tricky because it's easy for me to say as someone who's been doing it and has an established channel and all this uh, to say, do this. And then it's another thing when you're trying to break into it and you've got to like, you know, bust to get, get after it. Um, I'm so so I'm, I would I say I can interrupt you here, but yeah. guys, this is why I bring Caleb on because nobody says this part. Like there are so many people on YouTube right now telling you, Oh, I'm going to quit because of YouTube this or because of that. But you're the first person <clears> I've <throat> heard that says it's easy for me to say this as someone who's established. But the, right. the but it's different if you're just getting started because I think so many people are getting advice from people that are established and they're just getting started and they're thinking it applies and it is different. But I yeah. just appreciate that honesty up front. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, I, I have been speaking with a lot of not young creators necessarily, but creators who are just getting into it and are already, I mean, uh, some of the, the guys that I met at like Condo, for example, uh, or, or some of these events, um, the work they're putting in the, the like the level of like sweat and blood that they're shedding to get this stuff out there. I never, I mean, sure. At, at points I was working really hard, but when I got started, none of this was like it is now. And so mm-hmm. it's just kind of, we were just doing our thing. So I would say re- regardless, definitely think play the long game. So mm-hmm. fast forward to either your deathbed, if you want to go hardcore or <laughs> just retirement, whatever, what would what you want out of this? And how are you going to maintain this? And you've got to pace. You've got to pace yourself. Uh, yeah. or you're going to burn out slash hate it slash career changes, all that stuff. So for me, it was, it was it's kind of like investing. It's kind of like a lot of things in life where you just play the long game, pace yourself. Um, so that's one of the reasons I did the video and I'm and, and going through all this stuff is I want to pace myself. Uh, yeah. So for me, that means um, I think a lot of us are trying to make content that works uh, and then realizing we hate that. Um, so playing that long game of making, and it's this insane rabbit hole where you make videos because YouTube and the audience are enjoying them. And then you realize you don't want to do them, but now you've built an audience of people who wants that. So 
from the out of the gate, make stuff that you want to pace yourself, you know, make it sustainable. And the audience will. That's the beautiful thing about YouTube is it's literally its whole existence. The AI, the reason it, it exists is to find videos for people that are watching. So I um, love I love that answer. They'll they'll. Yeah. So I would say play that game, because if you start like, oh, this video did well, I didn't really care for it, but I'll just make more of those. You're just going to build an audience for something you don't want to do. And that's that's going to be rough. I can I can testify to that. I can testify that I'll say this. Like, I obviously my team knows this, but I've never said this publicly. So our most viewed video on my channel is a video I did. It's a Canva video. And don't get me wrong. Right. I think Canva is a fantastic. I think I told you this story. I but watched like, it and I was like, wow. Look at all this I stuff. I hate that that is my number one most viewed video. <laughs> yeah. You have no idea how much I hate that that's my most watched video. And don't get me wrong. I love the video and I think it turned out great and it's incredibly helpful, but it's just not everything I want to do. And this live stream is not something that works for YouTube, like the views versus yeah. like what the analytics want and all that stuff. It doesn't work, but I feel like we have so much more fun making this that like right. I've like if when your advice is to like do what you love and then like let the algorithm help you find that audience, that's literally what we're trying to do with this show. And so hearing you say that gives me personally just some reassurance that like, okay, we're on the right track. Let's just, let's just yeah. keep going. And, you know, um, I, I want to bring up Cam Mackey's super chat because like I, I am enjoying having these conversations on a week to week basis. Mm. And I believe, and like, just from like what we can tell, and I know data is not everything, but like our active viewers are going up and people are enjoying the show. And if you guys are enjoying the show, please hit the like button. It does mean the world for us because we don't make these for the algorithm. We make these because it's something that we love to do. And we think they're amazing conversations that you guys would enjoy watching. And so like, it, it does mean a lot to us and hearing you give that same piece of advice it, it, it means a lot. And so I just want to personally say thank you for that. And if anyone else is watching this, that is definitely a gym that you should like commit to memory. We're probably going to cut it and put it into a reel or something. Mm -hmm. So we can make sure more people hear about it because it is so important uh, when you're creating that you do allow yourself to just focus on what you really love. Cause that's what I think you can actually be like sustainable and do in a long term. Yeah. Yeah, Absolutely. And uh, the scaling thing, man, don't scale. Uh, it's, <laughs> it goes against everything in our American, like entrepreneurial grow, make it bigger. But uh, yeah, it, it, over it time, really I, I've, I've, I've personally have dealt with that with like, you know, the scaling and like, I even had like business coaches come in and they're like, oh, like you need to hire this many people and add this people yeah. and do all this stuff. And I've learned that like, I don't, I don't want to. Like I like having a small team and I like just yeah. creating what we can and just kind of running it that way. Have you, have you experienced any, like, have you tried to scale and learned that lesson the hard way? Like I have, or like, have you like been able to like hold off on that process of, of scaling? So definitely have scaled a lot. Um, and it's really tempting. It's always tempting. Cause we all want to succeed or do more or, and the worst is when something's working really well, like that, like this product, we can't keep them in stock. Like, uh, I'm, I'm, what I'm about to say is not to brag, but like last night we put up another big batch up and it sold out in like 10 minutes. It's so tempting that then let's go out. Let's, I mean, we could get a new, bigger space, hire a bunch of employees and we could 10 X this thing. And you start looking at numbers and you know, all this stuff. But every one of those steps involves more responsibility, more stress, more. And then you realize you hate it and it's just killing you. Um, yeah. So so if anything, from this point forward, I'm looking to to scale back, like, <laughs> you know, maybe get a s smaller space, work over a garage, you know, get back to go backward to like the basement days, you know. Yeah. Um, And and work, work, try to work less and do more of what I enjoy because. Uh, but again, even saying that, it's like, what are you talking about, dude? That's crazy. You can't do that. Um, but yeah, it's it's the, the scaling thing is really tempting. And and it's uh, just for, I've realized it just kills you slowly because uh, yeah. now, now I'm not making a thing. I'm answering a thousand emails. And oh. I mean, man, if you ever have to hire somebody, oh, my gosh, all of that is a nightmare. 
Yeah, I think for everyone who's watching this, I, I, I don't want you to feel like zero scale is a bad thing. Like right. it is okay to scale, but I believe scaling is one of those things where like it's infinite. And so like you feel like, oh, I just got to keep going and going and going. But the truth is that your company can scale indefinitely. The thing is, is that when you are a creator, I think specifically for our niche and for the people who enjoy this show and watch this show, you typically got into it for a reason, right? Like you want to yeah. make videos or you enjoy making something, right? But then the process of scaling needs to really be more about allowing you to continue to do the thing that you love because that's what allowed you to build a successful business anyway. And the problem is sometimes when you start scaling, you introduce things like, oh, now I have to be a manager. And you're like, well, I didn't want to be a manager. I just want to make videos. Yeah. So like learning to scale is like saying, oh, before I even hire an employee, I should probably hire a manager. And like, it doesn't sound like that makes sense, but it's like, no, 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 that's going to save my ability to keep doing the thing that I love. And so I just, I think that that's super, super important. Uh, and just like, as you continue to figure out how you want to scale and bring people onto your team, it should all be in the pursuit that just allows you to keep doing the thing that you love to do. And if you can yeah, scale yeah. and maintain that, you will still find success and not feel like you're being pulled in all these different directions. Love it. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. That got a little deep, but it's time <laughs> to get about it. But we're gonna we're gonna pull ourselves back out because as a lot of you guys know, here on the show, um, I love to torture my guests and make them play insane games that we just we just make up. Uh, throughout the week because we have so much fun but i got i gotta this is gonna show y'all who who caleb is so check this out for the game and Drell, i'll let you set it all up but i have to have to let the people see this caleb get get your thing ready because this is this this just shows you guys who he is so i ordered something i ordered these nice dry erase boards and i planned to ship it to him which i i did ship it but amazon let me down failed Amazon failed royally. However, in like two minutes of notice, he like ran around his studio and he came back. Please show the people what you made. This is the definition of a maker. He made this using God knows what and tape and just put this thing together in order for us to be able to do this. So Caleb, thank you so much for being uh, a good sport in this. But Jarrell, it is your time to shine. Let us know what we are doing today. You shouldn't always expect this, but we have a new game for you this week. <laughs> We're going to roll that intro. It's so good. Thank you, Travis. Brand new game. Agree to disagree. We have some hot takes. It's going to get spicy. Ooh. I'm going to throw out a statement. And with your paddle, you're going to have a limited time, like three seconds to throw up whether you agree with this statement or you disagree with this statement. And so if you guys disagree, we're going to throw up a one minute timer that you're going to convince the other party to join your side or we'll see if you guys stay on the same side. So we're going to keep it really, really simple on this very first one. Hold on really quick. Can can chat play in this? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Chat. It's going to be, it, we want you to literally put in the state. We want you to put in the chat if you agree or disagree. And then let us know. Let us know during that minute timer. Why? Why, why you ride so hard. Okay. I will. So uh, I, I preference all of our new games. Uh, I give Jarrell full creative control <laughs> on these games. So Under as I have said before, and I now apparently say in the intro, I, ha I have no control over what happens next, okay? I don't know what these statements are going to be, so I, I pre-apologize. Uh, but I think, Jarrell, you've never let us down. So, uh, Caleb, you've got your you got your paddle set? Yep. All right, I got mine. Let's, uh, Jarrell, what's our, what's our first statement? Do you love your mother? Oh, oh that's easy. I agree. Perfect. All right. That's that's it's so all, no no disagreement on this. No one. disagreement no on disagreement. this. That one's easy. All okay. right. So you do yeah, love your mother. Softball. I agree. We're, just, we're just starting off just very easy with that. Okay. So the second question that we have for you, 
Oh my goodness, where are my notes? Alrighty, second question that I have for you. Second question. Oh my is, goodness, what where happened? is my? Where did my phone go? Oh, as you guys know, this show is one hundred percent live. So uh, sometimes it takes us a second. <laughs> so okay, get, got great. it. We're great. We're All good. right, let's run All it. Right. Okay. I'm so the, glad everybody agreed with that last one. <laughs> in the yeah. Chat. In the chat. All right. Second question. Keeping it easy. The Vision Pro from Apple is going to change the way we edit and experience videos. Agree or disagree? Uh, I'm going to agree. The oh, idea wow. that I'll say that. Yeah. Ha have you experienced it yet? No. Okay. So I have not. Hold on. Post one sec. One sec. One sec. We are going to throw the time rep because I want, even though you guys didn't disagree, okay. I want to know why you think it's going to change the way we experience stuff. Oh, man. One people minute. Are, people are disagreeing. One minute. It. Okay. One minute. Do you want, who, who do you want to go first? Me? Yes. Okay. So I got a chance to experience the Vision Pro just a few hours ago for the very first time. I went Ooh. to the Apple store before the live stream and I used it. And I can tell you, immersive video it hits in a way that was like almost like the first time i went to the movie theaters like that's and like i know that sounds like a lot like i'm making like a big statement but i have to say like virtual video and like the depth of it it was so special now granted i don't think we're anywhere near close to it being like like everybody mass adopting it because it's just way too expensive like i don't know if anybody should actually buy this thing because of the price but i will say that like from the ability to have a monitor that you can take anywhere and strap to your face as well as just being able to like make content for this type of a uh, system it's amazing all right my time's up all right caleb what do you think um as someone who like i'm like off youtube really into like home theater recently so i built my own home theater um Maybe someday I'll do a YouTube video on it, <laughs> but it was, uh, I love that stuff. And the vision pro eventually, like I'm thinking like, I don't know, five, 10 years from now, when, when you and your family or whoever can all sit on one couch or wherever in a small room and have an, an immensely, um, uh, incredible theater experience without a theater is going to be awesome. And I think that's going to like, yeah, theaters are super duper dead now. It's going to be really, really bad. But yeah, that that alone to have a huge screen and for audio to be incredible, for the visuals to be incredible without having to spend an insane amount of money, money or time building it. Uh, and that's just the entertainment, much less video editing, having a bunch of screens across your desk, all that fun stuff. So, yeah. All righty. Question number two. All right. I'm going to pull up that, uh, that background music too. All righty. You guys ready? Yeah. The new ready. DJ... Mic twos are better than the Rode Wireless Pros. Pros? Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's that. The prefacing that with I've not used the two, the the twos. Okay. So, okay. well, Brandon, why do you feel like they are better? Yeah. Um. Okay. So, in in a nutshell, oh, this is so tough. Um. <laughs> The pros, <laughs> this is spicy. Uh, <laughs> Road has left the chat. <laughs> <laughs> no, Road is in the chat. D DJI, DJI has probably left, has the, left chat. the chat. Look, I, here's my opinion. I think the DJI mics are fantastic content creator microphones, but they're not pro microphones. Mm. And they lack, they, they lack in things like time code or any type of way to connect to time code. Um, I think as far as like sound quality goes, they're probably about the same, but I still lean a little bit more towards the, the roads. Like they sound and crispy. Yeah. The roads are, mm. are really, really crispy. Um, but for a content creator, the things that content creators need, I think the DJI is better. It connects to Bluetooth. I think it has, um, I'm running out of time and the timer does kill you. Roads are better. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. I just gotta say it. Roads are better. Uh, if you can only buy one. Probably you're cut off. You're cut off. You're Sorry. cut off. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Gosh, this is you can have some of my time. Cause, yeah, I don't. I don't have much to say. I've I've not seen reviews or I've only messed with the, the first ones. 
Um, the second ones are great, but they're yeah. you're cut off, Brandon. Okay, sorry. All right. <laughs> So number three, we're we're getting a little bit more. We're heading more into the spice jungle. All right, for the majority of content creators, yep, global shutter is overrated. Agree or disagree? Wait, that it's overrated? Overrated for content creators. For the majority of content creators, yeah, global shutter is overrated. The the tech global shutter. We're not talking about the cameras that they're the in. The tech. Okay. Uh, Caleb, uh, Brandon has been going first. You have one minute to let us know. For the majority of content creators, they don't care. They'll, they'll never know any different. Uh, and the viewers, they're not going to care. How many times do you catch yourself like watching a terrible video and you don't even notice because you're just in it for the content or whatever? So I don't think the global shutter uh, is going to be a thing. Uh, that people are going to need to care about and worry about. So it is super overrated, I would say, for the majority of content creators. You, okay. you resting your case? Yep. <sighs> All right, Brandon, your minute's up. <laughs> okay, I don't think it's overrated uh, because um, I think it assists a lot with tracking and stabilization which is how I think we're going to see improved stabilization in the future. And that's one thing that everybody needs. Um, I also think that global shutter, there is a way that it produces motion that is unlike anything else. So it's not just about warped lines. It's literally that the way that it actually captures the motion itself is better. And I think when you think about the average content creator, they need photo and video. And the best sensor to me that improves on photos and video is a global shutter because you don't get weird motion with like sports and like tennis rackets and things like that. It Because it can capture everything at one time, you're gonna see better photos and people won't know why they're better, but it will be because it's a global shutter and they won't know why their video looks better. But they will know it's a global, like it's because it's global shutter. They don't know why, but it's gonna make a difference. Your case has been rested. Chat, you're gonna have to decide, is it overrated or not everyone's gonna say it's overrated. disagree everyone's gonna say it's overrated I, I i know i'm i'm on the losing side of this battle <laughs> <laughs> all righty we're going a little bit more spicy more spicy yeah more, more. <laughs> full send on the spice but look marcus marcus says uh he's disagreeing with me i'm sure sorry b you're talking like a filmmaker content creators don't even know half the words you're saying <laughs> 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 that's that's probably accurate. That's actually pretty accurate. Sorry. <laughs> All righty. Nikon is on a comeback, and we will see more creators using Nikon. <sighs> that is spicy. That's, Nikon is that's on a come is on a comeback. Yeah. Wait. Nikon is on a comeback. Yeah. And we will see more creators using it this year. I want to agree. Uh, can I do <laughs> well, this? Say, put it this way for uh, for them yes yeah I'm come I'm, back. I'm gonna agree but I'm if a agree. comeback is selling 50 more cameras a year <laughs> then yes but taking the the video scene by storm spicy no. No. Uh, spicy so I was good up until you said content creators are gonna adopt them because there's just so many nikon haters and they don't even know why they're haters they're just haters oh you put the clock on me i don't i don't know why they're haters but they're haters nikon makes dope cameras i don't know why people don't understand it or they won't give it a shot caleb make more nikon videos show people how great <laughs> no he's shaking his head already i'm not gonna make any camera videos <laughs> <laughs> he says i'm out of the game uh i i agree with the first half and then i disagree with the second half i i don't think I don't think content creators are going to adopt them wildly. It's, it's, that's tough. Sony has too strong of a hold. They got Caleb. <laughs> Cannon's making a comeback. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. That's a great segue into our next question. We only have two more. Okay. I'm going to okay. I'm gonna let you guys off the hook. All we right. only have two more. All How right. spicy are we getting? Well, it depends. Oh, Lord. <laughs> uh, the Sony FX3 is a proper cinema camera agree or disagree oh snap 
Ooh, alrighty. Uh, Caleb, you went first, so now Brandon, why do you disagree? So I think it's getting there, but it's not there yet. Uh, I think you need a few additional features. Like I would love to see them. Like I know they've already announced that they're bringing global shutter to, or not global shutter, uh, shutter angle to it. I think that's coming, and that'll be that'll be firmware. Uh, is the firmware, firmware, yeah, okay. the firmware is coming out, but it's not coming until like September, mm. right? Caleb, am I right on that? You know, uh, I don't know, man. I, I stuck up this time, it. Caleb. I know there's yeah. enough to get out there. Look, I, I just, I believe that it's, it's extremely close, but I think, I think the FX six is more of a, of an actual cinema camera. I think the FX three is a A seven S three in a better body. It's what the A seven S three should have been, but it's still a mirrorless camera at the end of the day. Same camera, same sensor. Everything's about the same. They just gave you an XLR top handle and charge you a little bit more money. Sorry, hot take. Ooh, hot take. All righty. Uh, Caleb, <laughs> new 64. You said FX6 is a camcorder. Jesus. <laughs> Wait, what, you said FX3, I'm gonna reset right? your. I'm going to reset your time, Caleb. Go for it. Okay, we're talking FX3. Well, regardless, FX3, yeah. I, I would just say there's this guy out there who did a couple small films like Blade Runner, you know, and stuff like that, and he... He thinks iPhones are good enough, so I'm just gonna let Roger do the talking there. My God, um, yeah, I, I, I mean, what the creator was shot with the FX3. I still haven't seen it yet. Looking forward to that, but yeah, it's it's great. You can do all kinds of stuff with it. I guess it's how you define proper cinema, cinema camera. camera. Yeah. yeah, yeah. If we're going technical, Gerald Dundun style, like you know, cinema camera. Like, are we talking Netflix approved? That's it's Netflix approved. You know, it depends on your metrics, but um, if you're making cinema with it, I think it's a cinema camera. Hmm, I like that. So an iPhone is a cinema camera. Could be. Yeah. All right. Y'all heard it here first. Yeah, that would be horrible the iPhone. experience. <laughs> or <laughs> that'd be so he didn't say a good cinema camera. He just yeah, said yeah, yeah. That's true. That's true. <laughs> All righty. Very last one. Letting you guys off the hook. I regularly shoot in 6K or above. I regularly shoot in 6K or above. Oh, I disagree. I don't shoot in 6K or above that often. That's good. Well, audience, that was for you. What resolutions do you shoot in and codex? Mm. Uh, go ahead, Caleb. I'll let you go first. Uh, 4K on these cameras. I prefer the ones that are oversampled. So 7K down to 4K. Yep. Like this, the A7 IV. Um, and then Codex, I'm all H.265 now because mm. I'm not noticing a quality difference and I can record insane amounts of footage and all these fancy pants Apple computers with their new uh, chips are just tearing it up. So it's a joke. It's so fun and easy. If I was shooting red, though, I wish I was shooting red in a lot of ways. And then it's just. Pfft. Yeah, I was just about to say That's that. It. Done. <laughs> Sorry, it's uh, his yeah, like what he's shooting with. <laughs> <laughs> Primarily shooting with. <laughs> well, that's the hard part. I think for me, I when I shoot on my reds, it's always 6K. Even on my Raptor, I don't tip it like I'll crop into 6K because I just don't need the eight all the time. Oh, oh the yeah. new, uh, new 60 for you. Uh, look, I would say this when I shoot on my reds, it's almost always 6K, and that's just because on the mm -hmm. Raptor. I don't want to crop in any more than Super 35, so that's going to stay 6K. And then on the actual uh, Komodo X, that shoots 6K with a full 35 sensor. So on those cameras, yes. But outside of that, when I'm shooting on the Nikons, <laughs> I'm laughing because he didn't think I'd, I'd admit that online. When I you shoot, shoot with Nikon, Nikon? I didn't know that. Yeah, I shoot with Nikon. <laughs> oh, so that I was like spicy Nikon. then. Okay. Is there any way to be able to show? Oh, I don't know if they're gonna believe it. Uh, that I shoot with Nikon, yeah, dude. The, I got there's so Z. many cameras in this office. I, there are, but look, I, there are two reds in the office, and then there's a Z8 right over there that is one of my go-tos. And then I've recently started shooting with the ZF, and I like shooting those in 4K. But probably my favorite codec is actually ProRes RAW, and ProRes RAW on the Z8 is beautiful, and it's almost full RAW, but it's not full RAW. But that's probably one of my favorite codecs. But red raw is definitely my favorite. Yeah, there case is rested. There it is. Wow, chat man, you guys blew it up. Oh, let's see what they got. Somebody said pro Re ProRes is beautiful. 
ProRes is beautiful. And when I used to shoot Black Magic, this would make a lot of people mad. I bought the Black Magic cameras and I would only shoot them in ProRes. Yeah. People were like, shoot in Black Magic Raw. And I was like, I don't need to. The ProRes is fine. Although it ate a ton of data. The ProRes out of the Black Magic, beautiful. What other ones do we have in there, Jarrell? We all know Brandon's allegiance to red cameras. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Look, <laughs> I I like what I like. I've learned that in my journey, it's not like the camera doesn't matter, but it does for you. Like, this is my take on it. It's like, you got to figure out which camera works best for you. And like, for me, that's the red system. Because the, the, the big thing for me is like, I don't actually edit most of my work. So like giving my editor the most amount of latitude and like, if I miss white balance or something like that, knowing that they can just make that adjustment, like, it just it gives me the peace of mind to also create faster because I'm just looking for like beautiful frames and I'm looking at lighting and things like that. I don't want to have to think about all those little details and that's just how I work. And so for me, Red Raw works in those scenarios, but that's also why I like a lot of the Nikon cameras because they shoot ProRes Raw, which kind of gives me the same benefits, but just in a smaller package if I want to go more of a mirrorless camera body style, which I don't see ProRes Raw internal on a lot of mirrorless cameras today. We also have some B-Raw. It's the bomb. Nice. What else do we have in here? So, Caleb, you said you go H.265, and that's I guess that's just coming straight out of the, the Sonys. Have you right. felt a need for Raw in any flavor, whether that's ProRes, Blackmagic, or Red? No. I mean, you're looking at what I would be filming. Um, so there's plenty of dynamic range there. I would love if... Yeah, I would love if if I could have like Sony autofocus and red uh, in like a six thousand dollar body or less that isn't a Komodo and it's full frame. I'd I'd, I'd go for it. I don't. I love red. I love what they're up to, but I just it's not quite. You know, my I gotta I gotta do stupid stuff like this. You know, I can't just <laughs> pull something thing out of a box, put a lens on it, and go shoot. That's ridiculous. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I agree with you. It's it depends. Like it's like it's like discussions like this kind of feel like you know telling all runners there's only one shoe they they should buy you know it's like that's everyone's got their own analogy. you know what's going to work for them like right. i think that sounds ridiculous but you love it and that's wonderful <laughs> i'm so happy for <laughs> team yellow and you um tell me how you really feel caleb yeah <laughs> in the chat don't tell me how you feel about nikon unless you're telling me that you love it uh yes. someone said brandon is such a red boy <laughs> <laughs> he's oh my goodness i like uh, your style though red and nikon like who like i could see like canon and red or you know this and that but you're like nikon and red it, i'm just imagining those two communities and cultures and i won't diss either but those are two different people groups i would not expect in the same room yeah you know what i'm sitting right here <laughs> i sit right here and I probably sit by myself too. I don't know if there's anybody <laughs> else who shoots Nikon and who shoots Red. Yeah. Uh, but I find that they work out well. They edit well together. I've posted videos shot with both and nobody knows the difference. Actually, that's that's the hunt. If Do they you both can, have Sony sensors, actually? I don't know what Red's up to these days with their sensors. I I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. That would be that would be interesting. I will tell you though, Red with the Komodo X. And the Raptor, current Raptor, and now the new Raptor X, they are getting better at autofocus. It now tracks mm -hmm. your face. Nice. Does an okay job. Does an okay job. Uh, I've heard it tracks dogs better than people. I heard that from Jared himself. Uh, but you know, it's it's getting there. I think yeah. I think when red it's just a matter of time, right? Yeah, it's just processing and just a different type of engineering that you know they'll get there, and then then you'll be ready to shoot all of your content on red, and you'll love it. Yeah. Love my it. goal with this show is actually to convert all of my guests into red shooters one at nice. a time. Red does, and does red I, have like a Tesla like program where you can get like free recharges or whatever I charge? <laughs> Dude, just send me a memory card or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no. Well, dude, thank you so much for coming on to the show. Guys, uh, do me a favor in the chat. Tell Caleb thank you so much for coming out. You have dropped so many gems throughout this entire live stream. And honestly, I just had a really good time hanging out with you. Thanks for being a good sport with the game. Uh, Jarrell asked some wicked camera questions, but I think you you actually probably did better than I did. Uh, <laughs> and I think more people in the chat actually agreed with you. So 
you probably have a better pulse, but you've been doing this longer, right? Oh, uh, yeah. I was just the grumpy old guy. I was like, bah, who cares? <laughs> <laughs> no, thanks for having me, man. It was great. Great hanging out. Uh, I hope our paths cross soon. Uh, IRL. Are you going to I NAB? Uh, I am. It's going to be a short trip. Very short. Okay. Uh, how yeah. long are you there? Like a day. Are you coming in yeah. Sunday? Saturday night. Saturday night, stay in Sunday? Current, yeah. And okay. then out Monday. Got it. Oh, wow. Super short trip. Okay. Well, then yeah. let's definitely link up on that Sunday when you're there, if you have a moment. Uh, I'll be doing the same thing, flying in Saturday night. and But I'll, I'm not sure how long I'm going to stay yet. Still figuring sure. that out. Nice. Uh, might do some might do some Las Vegas meetups. If you guys are interested in oh. that, let me know. Uh, Nikon who, Bird Club of Las Vegas. Bird Club? <laughs> Nike, not, Nikon, uh, Nikon, Nikon, Nikon Bird, Bird, Bird Shooting <laughs> Club of Las Vegas. <laughs> Hosted yeah. by Brandon Washington. <laughs> I don't give away Nikon. the holsters with the. Yeah, sorry. I have I two of myself. I have my Z8 yeah. and my ZF. I'll just be like quick drawing. Go. But my yep. different lenses, you know? Uh, oh, man, you're right. I've never really thought about how different the group of Nikon and Red are, but somehow, you know. That's why I love you've got that thing going on. I love that. Yeah. It's, hey, you know what? Unapologetically, I love them both. So Good. that's, <laughs> that's, how, that's where I'm at. I'm all about it. Works for me. Someone says Nikon Potato Club. Get <laughs> out of here. <laughs> Dude, get out of here. I don't need that right now. <laughs> I don't need that right now. Y'all supposed to be on my side. Formerly known as the Potato Club. Formally, no, formally, yeah, they're now, up and coming. They're uh, on the rise or comeback. Yeah, <laughs> there it is. This is their year 2024. Nikon's yep. gonna make a comeback. You just wait, just yep. you wait. Peter McKinnon's gonna switch to Nikon. You heard it here oh, first. Oh, wow, <laughs> <laughs> hot takes. <laughs> That's not even a hot better, take. That's a straight up that. lie. They better come with a <laughs> uh. Well, Caleb, dude, nice. thank you so much. I appreciate your time. Uh, the chat enjoyed it. We've had a great time. Anybody? Yes, NAB meetup. We're going to do it. I don't know how we're going to. Love it. But we're going to do it. I'm saying it here now. I have no plans in place. I just made this up off the top of my head. This is 100% live. NAB, we'll do a uncensored Nikon live. Nikon booth. We'll all meet up. <laughs> Nikon. Because <laughs> you know Red won't have a booth. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Red, Red doesn't yeah. do a booth. No, we'll we'll figure it out. But dudes, thank you guys so much. Yeah. Caleb, thank you so much for coming out. Uh have Thanks, a great man. rest of your day, man. We'll Gentlemen, catch up it's great. Awesome. And brother. everyone in the chat. Yes. Thank you, bro. Thanks, man. Oh man, what an amazing time. Dude, I had so much fun talking to Caleb Jarrell. Like that that was a blast. Hey, and good job on the agree to disagree game. That was great. I had I had fun with that. You know, I try at times. <laughs> I try. <laughs> try just not to screw it up. Yeah. No, that 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 was that was a lot of fun. Um, guys, in the chat, really quick, I, I do have a couple quick things before we hop off of here. Uh, first and foremost, um, I want to say thank you guys again. Dude, like y'all have no idea how amazing the feedback has been on the show. I have seen the comments over on Instagram, and so I just wanted to say thank you. I, just, I did. I just want to take a moment and say thank you so much for, for doing this. Um, I, I'm saying it again here for the first time. We're going to figure out something at NAB. We'll do some type of meetup, some type of uncensored meetup. So if you don't already, follow me over on Instagram at Uh, We also start posting some of the clips and stuff from our Instagram or from these live streams over there. So if you have to hop off and hop back in and you feel like you missed something, we'll have that there as well. Um Guys, do me a huge favor. If you haven't yet, definitely consider looking into the Creative Fam Academy. If you don't know what the Creative Fam Academy is, this is our online education platform. And it's where we do a lot of bonus hanging out. Like, as you guys see, like we do this show every single week. But something that actually happens right after this show, only inside of the Creative Fam Academy, is we have what's called office hours. So it's where we chat for an hour from one o'clock central standard time to two o'clock, you can hop on there and answer, ask me any questions that you guys have. Now I'm going to be fully transparent with you guys this today on office hours. I'm probably going to be unboxing my new Apple vision pro while I'm doing the office hours because it's been sitting over there in a box and I am itching 
to actually go ahead and open up this thing and start playing with it. And so me and Jarrell are going to be hopping over to the Apple Vision. Or we're going to be hopping into office hours, which will be taking place here in just about 30-ish minutes. And so if you haven't yet, definitely consider signing up for the Creative Film Academy. We do have our very own app. It's available in both iOS and the Android store. And so you can download the app and sign up exclusively through that if you like, but you can also sign up just directly through the website. Um, and so we'll have that linked as well. And then of course, we have been talking about Red off and on throughout this entire show. I just wanna remind you guys one more time that we are having this Red event. It's gonna be March 2nd, and we're gonna have actual Red educators there. We're going to have hands-on experiences, so there's going to be a ton of red cameras there. And we're going to have an amazing networking opportunity for you to be able to hang out with other creators, other filmmakers in the area who are obsessed about gear. So even if you don't shoot red or you have no experience with red, don't worry about it. You can still come. We're going to be learning, shooting, and having a great time. And if you do shoot red or you feel like you have a lot of experience with red or you have some questions about red, we're going to have actual red engineers there and red trainers there to be able to answer your questions as well. Uh, and so we're putting a lot of work into this event in order for it to be an amazing time. And realistically, I'm super, super pumped about it. And I can't wait to see you guys in person. Now, um, I'm going to say something here because I know I saw Rob in the chat earlier. So I'm not sure if he's still here or not. However, uh, you're going to want to be following me on Instagram this week. Now, I'm saying this at the end of the show because those of you guys who stick around to the end of the show, you guys get the special scoop, okay? Here's the deal. I am currently working with a team and I got the text message right before we went live to let us know that we have actually pre-sold 10 tickets for the event and we're going to be actually be able to give away those tickets before they even go on sale. And so if you are interested in coming to the red event, I'm just going to say this right now. Be sure to be following me over on Instagram because that is where we're going to be announcing this. Now, again, this is going to be your chance to win these tickets before they even go on sale. But the information is going to be shared over on Instagram because of an amazing sponsor. And we'll have all of that information over on Instagram. So Rob and the Uscreen team, thank you guys so much for everything that y'all are doing. But definitely be sure that you're following me on Instagram. You're not going to want to miss this week because we're, we're going to give them away before tickets go on sale. And then after that, there's no more giveaways. So this is the week. So make sure you're tuned in. And this is specifically for people who, who stay linked in and who enjoy the show. Uh, this is why you do not get off the live stream early <laughs> because Brandon is a generous man and you never know what he's going to give away. So the people that are still on, you guys heard it here first. That's right. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to this week of Uncensored. We've had a blast. Let us know in the comment section ways we can continue to make this thing better. And, of course, we'll see you guys next week. Same time, 11 o'clock Central Standard Time, Friday. See you guys then.